Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Kalanadi. Today I'm going to do another one of the Booktube SFF Award Babbles topics. This one is Best and Worst Places to Live in SFF. I will leave links down below in the description to the Goodreads group for the Booktube SFF Awards if you want to know more about that, as well as the information on the Babbles topics. So let's jump straight into this one. So I've come up with five worlds that I would like to live in and five that are absolute nopes. Places I would actually love to live. Um, the first one, the very first one I actually thought of for this Babbles topic is the Young Wizards universe from the series by Diane Duane. This is the first book called So You Want to Be a Wizard. I think I've actually done an overview of this entire series a couple of years ago, so I'll try to dig that up and link it. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite childhood series, and it feels like kind of a cheat to say I would live in this place because it's the contemporary world, but I would like to live in this because of the magic system, which honestly functions very much like science and math, and I am so down with that. Um, a lot of the adventures involve these kids like going to the moon, going to Mars, traveling around the solar system, traveling to other um, solar systems and interacting with aliens and using magic to like tinker with how stars work and everything. I love it. It would completely suit me. <laughs> After that, there is The Goblin Market from In an Absent Dream by Seanan McGuire. This is my favorite out of all the worlds that we've seen or had stories set in so far in the Wayward Children novellas. Um, and it's the only one I would actually want to live in. It's, it's a community that's um, based on fair value, like fair trade. And I also think that just that's a society that I would do really well in because I I don't know, I like that sense of fairness <laughs> um, and rules that I can actually understand. And now for something fun, I really wanted to include the Parasol Protectorate from Gail Carriger's books in this list because I think I would actually enjoy living in this world. I mean, it does have its dangers and its pitfalls. Um, it's like alternate history steampunk 1800s. I can't remember the specific date ranges for the various series. Um, but supernatural creatures like vampires and werewolves are real. Um, there are, of course, restrictions on women because of the time period, but I have this feeling the fashion, the clothing would be amazing. And at least through reading the books, it seems like a pretty good place to be an eccentric and unconventional woman. And I would be that. <laughs> then there is a world that I've wanted to live in badly enough, I've felt actual emotional pangs that it's not real. And that is the Hive system from the Terra Ignota series by Ada Palmer to Like the Lightning is the first book and I have reviewed all three of the books that are out so far, it's gonna be a quartet. This series is set in the 25th century in what appears to be a utopia. It's been hundreds of years since there was war and Everything is very peaceful and prosperous. There's a high level of technology. And the thing that I like the most is that um, geographic nations like territories have been replaced by the hive system. And hives, I, I think of them kind of like political parties that you can choose to join the hive that aligns best with your beliefs and your interests and, and your personal philosophies and everything. There's just something about this that really appeals to me, the idea that it no longer matters where in the world you are from, but it matters more what you have aligned yourself with. And that's more of a conscious choice. And yes, my fifth and last pick for best places to live may seem kind of silly and it comes with caveats, but I had to include it. And that is Discworld from all the Discworld books by Terry Pratchett. To be clear, not Ankh Pork. I would not live in that city. <laughs> I would be mugged and probably killed within the first hour and or I would contract a deadly disease because I don't have good sewage systems and stuff like that. I, however, would love to live in a place like the chalk from the Tiffany Aching books. 
And if I did end up living in a more um, urban area, I'd probably work in the bank system or the postal system, the Klax Towers, any any of like that infrastructure that's mentioned in the Moist Von Litvig books. I would be really good at a lot of those things. And now for the much briefer list of places that would be the worst to live in, in my opinion. This first one isn't actually a terrible, terrible place. I would just definitely not choose to live there if I was given a choice. And that is the Alliance Union Universe by C.J. Cherry. I have enjoyed plenty of books set in this universe. One of my favorites is Down Below Station. Um, but like the corporate powers scare me. Places like Cytine scare the crap out of me with their cloning and practically like mind control. Um, and just the, the what I've read about how the the medical and healthcare system is is portrayed and what it does also scares me. So I would not choose to live there. <laughs> Kind of continuing that medical theme actually is Harmony by Project Ito. This is a book I read very recently, but it made this list right away because this is basically a dystopic future where you have no control over your own body, your health is not your own, and you also have no privacy. And no, that's terrifying. <laughs> Next up is a part of the world from one of my favorite science fiction series, and that is the Planetfall universe, specifically the society and like the situation on Earth in After Atlas, which is my favorite book in the series. This book is so good, but it is basically grappling with modern day slavery. Um, there are a lot of economic and climate problems on Earth at the time of this story, and there's a system of like corporate indentured servitude, which is awful. And I think the reason why this book and like this series is so good is that it is just realistic enough that it's scary and it's really intelligent about dealing with those issues. But no, there are some really exciting and interesting things in this world, but I would not want to live there because I would be in the bottom percent and no. The Machineries of Empire series by Yoon Ha Lee, another science fiction series that I completely love, but no, I would not live in this universe. I would not live in the Hex Arcade. I mean, guys, their population is basically cannon fodder for their continual wars, and ritualistic torture is a bedrock of how they run their society. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> And lastly, as I was looking through my bookshelves, I had to also mention The Core of the Sun by Johanna Sinisalo. Rampant misogyny. Horrible, horrible misogyny. I think I did a review of this book if you want to know more. And that is it. Those are what I think are some of the best places to live and some of the worst places to live in science fiction and fantasy worlds. Let me know if any of these also made your best or worst lists, or if there's any that you think that I completely missed. <laughs> leave me a comment down below, and once again, I will leave links to all of the BookTube SFF Awards stuff in the description as well if you want to check that out, and if you want to participate in the Babbles topics yourselves. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon, and until then, bye.